coming up tonight on CTV. I gave blood to help beat Wyoming. And a new initiative in Fort Collins to make the city even more bike friendly. Plus, reporter Kelsey Peterson attempts ROTC training. Welcome to CTV on this Wednesday night, the 14th of November. I'm Tom Mullen. And I'm Lena Howland. Today on the plaza, three new tour vans were unveiled and voting began to name these vans. CTV reporter Blake Jarvis has the story. Colorado State introduced to the public this morning the new tour vans, which seemed to be quite a hit. The reason why we had these vans is so that when we have students and their parents and their families come onto campus, we can really show them every part of campus. Students gathered around the plaza today to vote on nine proposed names for the vans. The names will be announced, uh, we're hoping by the end of the week. They're going to be decals that go on the back of the van, so everybody will, will be able to tell what their name is. And as if that's not enough, these new tour vans have zero emissions, so students can enjoy the clean air. We're trying to have as little of an impact on the environment as possible. Every single one of the vans is, uh, I guess, eco-friendly in terms of they're all electric. Some students, however, think it could cause more traffic around campus. We've been working with CSUPD, and we've made it so that uh, there are going to be certain designated areas where the van can go, and all of the uh, people driving the vans have been trained on how to drive, how to work with pedestrians, how to work with bikers. Keep an eye out for those traveling green machines. I'm Blake Jarvis for CTV. Football isn't the only rivalry CSU has with Wyoming. Monday marked the start of the Border War Blood Drive. I went and experienced firsthand the blood donation process. I arrived at Poudre Valley Hospital bright and early to help start off the Border War Blood Drive. The first stop on my journey was paperwork. I filled out a questionnaire about my medical history and habits. Next, a nurse pricked my finger so she could test my blood for its cell count. Damn. This part didn't hurt that much, but there was some blood. That's the worst part of this whole thing, I promise. Okay. After my blood checked out, I was sent up to the blood mobile. I got all settled in and ready for the big needle. Sticking the needle in did kind of hurt, but it helped to have a hand to hold. You getting all this? 20% of blood recipients are children, and one pint of blood can save up to three lives. It's really not that hard, and once you get over the little prick, it's really easy. For 10 minutes, I drank water and patiently waited for the blood bag to fill up. I'm saving lives, I'm saving lives, I'm saving lives. After the needle was out, I was treated to awesome dinosaur bandages and juice while I sat and recuperated. One well, of the best part of donating blood is all the free snacks you get afterwards. And just like that, it was over. I walked out of the bus feeling fine and like I had helped someone in need. So don't be scared. If I can do it, so can you. Donate blood today. Now, the free food and sense of accomplishment isn't the only perk of donating blood. You also get this awesome free Border War Blood Drive shirt this week. Wow, Tom, that's amazing. So was it worth it? Definitely. You know, it was kind of scary, and of course the, the needle did hurt. But you know, afterwards, I really felt like I had done something good. Do you think you'd ever give blood, Lena? You know, I don't think it's necessarily my thing, but I'm very proud of you for doing it. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> also, the blood drive ends this Friday, so donate today. Still ahead, the first update from President Obama since March. And what Boulder is doing in support of Amendment 64. We'll be right back. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. What a perfectly beautiful little lady. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals. Cute little rascal. Eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Oh, ladies first. Be that person. Adopt. This is living. Hey, kid. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. 
In his first post-election news conference, President Obama spoke about the economy and problems he aims to tackle in his next term. Obama touched on his campaign promise that America cannot continue to cut taxes for wealthy Americans. He also said that he will be working with Congress to, cut to, to make cuts across the board. The ongoing scandal involving former CIA Director David Petraeus was also brought up, but President Obama defended him, saying there was no evidence that national security had been breached because of the scandal. In light of Amendment 64, the Boulder DA announced one say that all pending cases of marijuana possession under one ounce will be dismissed. District Attorney Stan Garnett said paraphernalia charges will also be dropped. He made this decision based on his belief that because of the overwhelming support for Amendment 64 in Boulder, it would be highly unlikely a jury would ever reach a guilty verdict. And shared lane markings are the latest trend in Fort Collins bike safety. The city of Fort Collins recently added these shared bike markings on streets that are just not wide enough to install bike lanes, yet still experience high bike volume. The first shared lanes in Fort Collins were installed on Mountain Avenue through the downtown area in the spring of 2011. In these specifically marked areas, it's, uh, it's legal for bikers to ride in the middle of the street and cars must share the road. A few of the new markings are located at East Elizabeth Street between Stover Street and LeMay Avenue, as well as Springfield Drive between City Park and Linwood Drive. And coming up, Kelsey Peterson was put to the test in honor of Veterans Day. Stay tuned. <laughs> Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Start light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Two soldiers from Fort Carson that were injured in a crash on November 7th are in serious condition. The rollover crash occurred during a training exercise. Three other soldiers have been released from medical care. Fort Carson has not released any of the names or injuries that the soldiers suffered. All the soldiers are from the 3rd Brigade Combat Team. There are approximately 200 cadets in ROTC at CSU, and only about 12 of those cadets are female. So what is it like to be a part of that 6%? Kel reporter Kelsey Peterson went to find out. CSU's ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps, is only about 6% female. Caitlin Lozano is one of those females. It's kind of weird because we're supposed to be treated like the guys, but in doing so, the guys treat us differently. But it doesn't really affect me. It just makes me want to work harder so that they'll accept me because I'm a girl and I'm a really small girl. So people look at me and they're like, oh, like she can't do anything. So I just want to show them up. Overall, she... Uh may not have been the biggest, but she, uh, she's very strong. Guys in ROTC definitely treat me different when I'm in uniform. I've kind of built a reputation for myself where people don't really mess with me. Where as out of uniform with my friends outside of ROTC, I'm just a big goofball and they don't really see that. Our cadet battalion commander pretty much said straightforward that uh, we are all here to train and we're all treated as equals. At 6 in the morning, Lozano is up and training for her PT test. The first part is two minutes of push-ups, the second part is two minutes of sit-ups, and the final part is a two-mile run. I'm Kelsey Peterson with CTV News and this is my attempt at an army physical fitness test. Go. <laughs> One. <laughs> so the push-ups I wasn't so good at, but the sit-ups in the run I could do. The standards are of course different for men and women, but fair because, as Lozano says, it's all proportional. But what about women in combat? But the only reason I'm kind of concerned about it is if I go down and I'm carrying 60 pounds of gear with my 107 pound self. It's, it's kind of a lot of weight uh, for a female to try and drag up. There are a lot of aspects of ROTC that are extremely physically tough for women. And it can be very disheartening and difficult, but I think anyone can do if they put their mind to it. Cadet Lozano can pass the male PT standards, and even though she is treated differently than her male comrades, in her mind, gender is not a factor. 
Wow. Lena, do you think you could pass that fitness <laughs> test? Well, you know, I think I'm on Kelsey's page. I think I can do the sit-ups and do the running. I just don't know about those push-ups. Not so hot in that area. Oh, same here. I am awful at push-ups. Sit-ups, running, that I can do, but look at these arms. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do a gym training session. That sounds good. Let me know if you ever find a good one. Okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> what is the weather going to look like for your fall break? Kari Pills fills us in. And an advisory if you're traveling this holiday. We'll be right back. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. 43,000 CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. CSU is proud to announce the new Colorado State University Denver Center, where Ram alums will feel at home. It's a place to make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni, and even show your Ram pride with a wide selection of CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU, the CSU Denver Center at 17th and Glenarm. Learn more at rams5280.colostate.edu. Welcome back. Beautiful day today. We saw highs in the mid-50s this afternoon after temps had to warm up from below freezing temps last night. Today was a pretty calm day. We saw a little cloud cover in parts of the state. Through tomorrow, we have a weak system coming in that'll make those skies a little cloudier as we bring in slightly colder temperatures. Highs across the state were pretty mild today. Vail at 38, Fort Collins at 55, Denver at 66, and Gunnison at 45. Looking at the week ahead, tomorrow will be a little chillier with a high near 46. There will also be a slight breeze from the south at 5 to 7 miles per hour throughout the afternoon. Thursday night will drop down to about 23 degrees. Friday will warm up a little and see a high near 56. Friday night will fall just below freezing at 31 degrees. And this weekend expect sunny skies with the highs in the upper 50s. Lows will be chilly at night. The, so be sure to bundle up if you plan on going out. Monday will be mostly sunny with a high near 58. Tuesday will be mostly sunny with a high of 59 degrees. Enjoy the beautiful week ahead, Rams. Back to the desk. Thanks, Kari. Here's a look at what the Food Bank of Larimer County is doing to support those families in need this holiday season. With Thanksgiving just around the corner, hundreds of families in Larimer County are struggling to find enough cash to have a turkey dinner. The Food Bank for Larimer County teamed up with the Pooter School District to collect just over 1,300 turkeys, but are still coming up short of their goal. We're hoping to get um, 2,500 turkeys total, so we're still eight or 900, maybe even 1,000 short of what we need. So we could sure use some more turkeys. So if you're out there and you've got a few extra dollars, you can go to King Supers and buy a turkey, uh, bring it to us. We're going to be here from 7.30 to 4.30. Uh, the next three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and we can take tur turkey donations. We sure need them. Holidays are always a popular time to travel, and this year is no exception. AAA says more Americans will be traveling up seven-tenths of a percent from last year. It's predicting more than 43 million people will travel at least 50 miles from home. Sunday, November 25th is expected to be the biggest day for travel, followed by Wednesday the 21st and Monday the 26th. All right, any big plans for this fall break? Oh, you know, just going home and spending Thanksgiving with the family. What about you? Pretty much the same thing here. Oh, yeah, and you, would you, maybe you should stop by and, you know, uh, have some pumpkin <laughs> pie with me. Definitely. Lots of turkey, too. Uh, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. I love, like, all the food, the turkey, right. and everything. I know. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. To get all of the latest news, you can visit our website at ctv11news.com.